have your Bibles, yeah. we're going to Psalms 84, Psalms 84, and we're going to hear what the Word of God says about walking with the Lord and walking in His presence. The Bible says, in His presence is fullness of joy. And so I want you to see how God loves to bless people that walk in His presence. In Psalms 84, beginning verse 1, it says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found, home, found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your, even your altars. Lord of hosts, my King and my God, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will, will still be praising you, Selah. Blessed is a man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Boca, of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Everybody say strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O oh Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob, Selah. O oh God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O oh Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. So it's talking about the blessing of just being in his presence. As you are blessed, as you are walking in his presence, you are, you are being strengthened, you are being increased, the Word of God says that you will walk as if you were a river that's giving, that's giving water to, to, to dry land. It says you're going to go from strength to strength. It says that, that when you walk in the presence of God, no good thing will he withhold from you. No good thing. If it's good, you can have it. Tell your neighbor that. If it's good, you can have it. Tell the other person, I don't think they, they believe you. If it's good, you can have it. Amen. See, sometimes we over-spiritualize everything and we think, oh, God just wants us to have just peace and joy and love and, and, and be spiritual all the time in his presence and worship. Yes, those are wonderful and those are the greatest blessings, but the, the earth is the Lord in the fullness of it. All this was created for you. And if you desire something good, why do you have to go to the devil to go get it? Can't you go to your heavenly father and believe him and ask of him and receive it from him? Is your God dead or is he alive? Is he a blesser or is he a curser? Our God is a blesser. Our God is alive. Our God loves us. And he promises to fulfill his word. His word has been given to us. No good thing will he withhold for those that walk in his presence and walk right before God. See, there's a condition. You've got to be chasing God. You've got to be loving God. You've got to be pressing into God. You have to be growing into God. And as you are chasing God and growing with God and living for God and, and, and walking according to his ways, no good thing will he withhold. Amen. See, there is a separation that takes place when you walk in the things of the Lord. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you can't go back to living the old life. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. There's a new way of living. We are no longer walking in the curse. We're now walking in the blessing. We're no longer walking in fear. We now walk by faith. We're no longer thinking about ourselves, but we're walking in love and we're saying, Lord, use us for your glory. There's a transformation that comes to our mind and our heart. Everything that we own belongs to God. And the, the, the thing about it is walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, it's such a new thing that happens. The world doesn't understand it. The Bible says that they walk in darkness and we're now walking in light. 
They're walking, living according to lies of this world. We're walking according to the truth of the word of God. We're walking in the light, amen? And then you're, but see, I, I wanna share this with you because there are people here that I'm hearing awesome, amazing testimonies that they're being blessed with persecution. They, they've come to God and they've surrendered their life to God. They've met Jesus Christ and made Jesus their Lord and Savior. And they've come home and, and now that they, they're saved, their family is rejecting them. And they don't understand that, that that's part of the price that we must pay to live for the Lord. They don't want you to be in the, in the place where God's glory is, is, is reigning because you're like a light and your light is shining upon their darkness and they have to make a decision whether they're going to step into the light and receive the glory of God or stay in their darkness and in their wickedness, in their shame, in their pain, in their guilt. And just the presence of God upon you is convicting them. You can say absolutely nothing but the presence of God that's upon you is convicting them. They would rather you hide it under the, the cloth of, of, of religion and tradition. They would try to make you very religious and tradition according to the old ways because they're, they're comfortable with the old ways because the old ways produce nothing but death and false hope. But the newness of God is where you see the glory of God, where Jesus Christ is, reigns and his presence is there and brings healing and salvation, deliverance to others. They don't want that because they're afraid of that because they don't know that. But you know, Jesus, your eyes have been opened. You have revelation. Jesus Christ is not dead in the grave, but he's alive and he's alive inside our hearts. And so you have to make a choice. You have to make a decision to live for God. There was this one woman. She went to church and she gave her life to the Lord. She went to the altar and committed her life to Jesus Christ. And she just was so happy and so overwhelmed with the love of God. She went to, to her, her boyfriend and she told him, I, I, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's real, he's alive, and he's inside of me. And I'm going to follow him all the days of my life. And she said, you should, you should follow him too. He loves you. He wants, to, he wants to be your Lord and Savior. And this man, his heart was so hard. He said, he said, look, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe he's real. And I don't, want you, I don't want you living for Jesus. And she looked at him and she said, I would rather go to heaven without you than to go to hell with you. She made a choice. She was going to follow Jesus Christ. We all have to make that choice. We have to, the Bible talks about that. There's times we have to walk away from family, from homes, from, from brothers, from sisters for the gospel's sake. But there is a reward for, for all that, that obedience to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we have to choose to walk with God. Amen. And we are blessed in his presence. That's the one thing that the Lord will always bless you with is his presence. His presence will always be there. But in his presence, there's such a healing and restoration and blessing that, that happens because you're walking in his presence. Amen. Go with me to Psalms 37. Somebody say good things. Again, good things. In Psalm 37, verse 3. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So not only does the word of God says that God wants to give you good things, but the word of God says he wants to give you the desires of your heart. How many of you have some desires in your heart? How many desire some increase in your life? How many desire to be walk, uh, wearing new things and, and driving new things and living in a new place and having more than enough to be a blessing to your friends and your family and to the ministry and the gospel of Jesus Christ? How many are believing God for big things and increase? How many have some desires to bless others? Well, the word of God says, he says that he will give you your heart's desires. Some people get offended by this word because they would rather you preach uh, poverty than preach the blessings of the Lord. When God blesses you, nobody could curse you. Why would I want to teach curses? Curses, 
curses are curses. I don't like curses. Do you like curses? I like blessings. Our God is a blesser. And he's blessing his people. It's part of your inheritance as being the sons of God. And so the Bible says that he'll give you your heart's desire. Why don't you turn to God instead of turning to the credit cards? Why don't you turn to God before you go down the street to the pawn shop and, and borrow something that you think you need? Come on now. That, that, all that adds is sorrow. If you don't believe me, how many of you, uh, well, not, nobody here, of course, we're all blessed. But there are people that turn off their phones at certain hours of day because they know that the, the phone call is some sort of credit card collector. And so we got to be living free where God is the blesser and God is the increaser so we can tell everybody, look what the Lord has done. He blessed my house. He blessed my family. He blessed us with this. And I've been blessing him and serving him by, by preaching the gospel with my giving. Amen. Hallelujah. And so here it says he will give you the desires of your heart when you delight yourself. Amen. So tell your neighbor, delight yourself. In other words, enjoy his presence. Live in intimacy with God. Know how to pray and spend time with God. Don't be such a rush just to get through your prayers and walk away, but sit in the presence, sit in worship, sit in his glory. Enjoy God's presence. And the word of God says that as you're just enjoying him and reaching out to him and, and loving him, he will give you your heart's desires, amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. And so this, this is a blessing by the word of God, it's a promise. But how I many you know that everything that, that God promises, we must receive it. Amen. We must receive it by faith. And so if you have your spiritual hands closed, you can't receive it from God. Even though God promises and he wants to give it to you, he wants to bless you. But just like a baby trying to eat food, unless that baby opens up its mouth and receives the food, it's not going to eat the food. Amen. And you know, sometimes God has to put us through some things where he's stuffing our nose and so and he feeds us real quick. Amen. <laughs> But this is by faith, amen? We receive it by faith. And so I want to share this word, how to use your faith to receive good things. In Mark 11, 24, the word of God says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Amen? Amen. It doesn't give you a might. It doesn't give you a maybe. This is Jesus saying, he said, if you, when you pray and you believe that you receive them, you will have them. You will have them. He didn't say it's a might, maybe it might not happen. No, you will, you will, you will, you will. That's his promise through the word of God. That's Jesus' message to you. You will have them if you believe when you ask. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, this word, my father, when he, when, he, when he stepped out, believing God for, for increase, he was living in such poverty, but he had a word from the Lord, and, and he was preaching the gospel with old suits, and he had uh, shoes with holes on the bottom of his shoe. And he used to tape a quarter to the bottom of the shoe just to keep the elements out, because the, the, the bottom of the, the sole had a hole. And he's preaching how God provides, how God blesses. Listen. We might not be there yet, but we're building our faith, amen? You have to build your faith. And, and so, you know, I encourage you, just act it out until you get there, amen? Just don't wait for it to see financial prosperity declare that you're blessed. Begin to declare you're blessed in the name of Jesus, and those things will come. They will come. Begin to declare that God will provide. Begin to cast your cares upon the Lord. Begin to live by faith, even when you don't have right now, but trust God and you, you won't be disappointed, amen? And so my father was preaching how God provides and how God's a blesser and that we, he will bless you when we ask in prayer by faith. And here he was preaching in San Antonio, Texas. My mother was there. And at the end of the service, a bunch of the ministers came around my father and they wanted to hear more of the word of God. They were so blessed by the word of God. And my father said, yeah, come on over to our house in San, San Benito. Come in and, and, and we'll, my wife will make you dinner. We'll just, we'll talk more about the word of God. And my mother gave my father that look that says, oh, when we are alone, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> and my, you know, at, when they got alone, my, my mother said, said, Carlos, what did you do? You told these men to come over to our house. You just got finished preaching how God provides, how God blesses, and they're going to come to our house. They're going to see the holes in the furniture. They're going to see the, the broken down 
furniture, the, the holes in the curtain. They're going to see how we live and they're going to say that, that you are a liar, that you are a fake. And my father, he went to the word. He said, you're the woman of the house. If you desire it, believe God. You pray, you believe, and you shall receive it. And so, and so they, they, she, she went home, and my mother began to write everything that she wanted. She wrote down new tables, new furniture, new, new, new everything, new curtains. She wanted it all new, new beds for the, for, for the family. She, what, what was she doing? She was, she was writing down the good things that she wanted the good things, and she put it on the refrigerator, and her and my father came in agreement, they believed God, and they prayed, and they believed that they receive it in the name of Jesus. And from that day forward, they just began to thank God, they just began to worship God every day, just trusting God, even though they had, they had, you know, broken down furniture, my mother would go there, and she'd start sewing up some of the furniture and fixing up the furniture the best she could. Then one day, a winter Texan was in, in the valley, his name is Tom Scratch Skusky. And he showed up to the house and, and he knocked on the door, not even knowing who we are. And he, he said, he said uh, you don't know me, but I was at the furniture store the other day and God told me to buy all this furniture and bring it to this house. And so they backed up the truck and blessed the house with all new furniture. My mother grabbed that list and began to mark off every desire that she had asked before the Lord. And God gave her good things. Amen. Amen. Well, if God could do that for my mother, God could do it for you. Amen. This is how we've seen everything that we have ever built or received uh, that, we, that we need in this ministry. It's always been purchased by faith. We've never had strength. We never had great prosperity. We don't have a business plan that produces a certain amount of revenue so that we can take care of the needs. No, the Lord is our provider and he's our blesser and he's the one that takes care of us. And so I want to give you seven steps on receiving good things. Everybody say good things. If it's not good, it's not God. I love that, that statement. If it's not good, it's not God. Amen. Don't ask for secondhand things. Don't ask for things that, that, that is just good enough. No, it has to be good things. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're talking brand new. Amen. Tell your neighbor brand new. Because if you put your desire on something that is not fully good, then you are limiting what God can do. Understand this. We are not talking about what you can do in your power. We're talking about what the Lord can do in his power. You might say, well, pastor, my job has been stagnant. I haven't had raises in years. Or you might say, pastor, I don't even have a job. It doesn't matter. God's not looking at your financial statement saying what, what you can afford. This is between you and God. This is prayer. This is something that the angels begin to move and operate on your behalf to produce for your life. Amen. He loves you and he bless you. The Bible says if, if God did not spare his own son, how much more will he freely give you all things? Amen. So somebody say good things. Good Come on, say good things. Good Hallelujah. So the very first, first step of receiving good things is enjoy God. Enjoy God. Enjoy God. Have a good time with the Lord. Have a good time spending time with God. Amen. Amen. If you find out that you are not spending time with the Lord, some of you need to, need to go on a walk and just have an encounter with God. Some of you need to take a drive and just talk to the Lord. Develop your personal relationship with God. Amen? Hallelujah. If, if the only time you experience God is when you come to church, you do not have a relationship. You are just making a visit. Amen? But when you develop a relationship, you're talking to him, you're walking with him, you're spending time with him, and you are listening to him. You are developing that intimate relationship with God. So number one, enjoy God. Amen. Say enjoy God. Enjoy God. Number two, dream big. Dream big. Not what you can afford, but what you desire. Don't limit what God can do. You have to dream big and believe God for big things. Amen. He's a big God and he loves to bless his people. Amen. Now, just remember this. This is a side note. If you're believing God for big things and you are not prepared to get in there, God's going to have to prepare you. So it's going to take time. Amen. But dream big of what God could do through your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three. Say three. three. Write it down. Write it down. Amen. See, because if you can't write it down, then it really doesn't mean anything to you. The Lord loved you so much that he wrote down his big dreams for you. Amen. Can't you write down the big dreams that you're believing God for? Amen. Write it down. 
Write it down. Have it somewhere. Have it somewhere. Put it before you. When you wake up, you see it before you. When you throughout the day, you see it before you. And just thank God during that time. Amen? Hallelujah. Number four. Everybody say number four. four. Call it in. Call it in. Romans 4, 17. 4, 17 says, calls those things which do not exist as though they did. You have to go and begin to call the things in in the name of Jesus. You know, I, I pray all the time. I said, Father, I thank you for this day. I call in salvation. People that need to get saved from the north, south, east, and west. I call in increase in provision in the name of Jesus. If you had a business, you should stand up before your business. I call business into this facility from the north, south, east, and west to come into this place and buy my goods and, and, and purchase my services in Jesus' mighty name. Call it in in the name of Jesus. Call it in. Go, go. If you're believing God for a, for a new couch, Father, I thank you that right here is where you are going to bless me with a new couch. I call it in in the name of Jesus. I call that couch done for, pay for in Jesus' name. It's mine in the name of the Lord. I'm calling it in. Amen. Tell your neighbor, call it in. Call it in. Hallelujah. I know, I know some of you want to text it in and message it in, but no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you got to call it in. Amen. If you can't open your mouth and call it in, then it doesn't move you. It's not going to move God. Amen. Call it in in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And number five, prepare yourself to receive it. Prepare yourself to receive it. There are many times we ask things from God, but we're really not expecting to receive it. And so if you're not making room to receive it, you are not using your faith. You're not expecting to receive it. Amen. If you're believing God for a new car and you don't have a car, go into your garage and sweep it, sweep it, sweep it as if you got the new car already. That's where it's going to be in the name of Jesus. Prepare to receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you're believing God that you'll be successful in your planting adventures of, of a new garden. Why don't you go over there and start working the ground, look at it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Prepare, you know, get a new basket or something to receive the fruits from it. Amen. Expecting to receive. Amen. You got to expect it. So prepare yourself to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Number six, obey. Obey. The Bible says faith without works is dead. The word of God says that, that the spirit of God is the one that leads us. And he'll tell you and he'll speak to you about doing certain things. you got to be obedient. You have to be obedient. There's times the Lord will tell you to sow a seed. There's times the Lord will say to pray a prayer, to speak to somebody or do something. You know, don't you understand that God knows the door that needs to be opened over your life? And there are many times he'll take you to a place and say, talk to that person. And you'll say, well, I'm too embarrassed, God. I can't really talk to him. No. You have to be obedient. So when you show up, follow the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And number seven, everybody say number seven. The number seven is wait for it. Pastor, I asked for God to bless me last week and it still hasn't happened. What are you going to do about it? It has absolutely nothing to do with me. I am not your God. He is your God. You got to wait for it. Don't get, don't, when you're waiting, don't let it change you. Don't, don't let it, don't let, don't come out of faith because you're impatient. Faith and patience, they work together. Pastor, I've been praying for a year to be healed. Well, you're still alive? Yes. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep confessing. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. But pastor, what if I don't get healed? Ah, shh. What if you do? Amen. Amen. If you don't get healed, nothing changes. But if you do, everything changes. Amen. Just because it's a little bit of time wasted, you know, you've gone through a little time, doesn't mean that you, that you give up. There's a birth time. Amen. Yes. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Everybody say faith. faith. Say patience. patience. You will receive it. Amen. And so when you're believing God and trusting God, here's the wonderful thing about the Lord. Time does not, God does not exist in time. Time exists in God. And even though we want it now, we're believing God, we want it, and we, you know, we claim it, and we believe it, and that's awesome, that's amazing. But, but don't try to rush God. Understand, that's where you're going to have to lean on his understanding. That's where you're going to have to trust in the Lord.
You might not have what you've been believing God for right then and there and see it in your hand, but it doesn't mean that God said no. It just means the Lord says, wait for it. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, wait for it. Pastor, I'm going to go to church for two weeks. And if God doesn't do everything for me in two weeks, then I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Like you're punishing God. Like you have the power to punish God. Understand this. You need God. God does not need you. But he loves you. And he empowers you. Wait for it. Some of you all are believing for some really big things. Amen. Amen. And it's on its way. Hallelujah. They're on their way. Amen. The angels are coming with them. I'm telling you, they're on their way. But if you don't wait for it, when it comes, you're not going to be there to receive it. Amen. And so though it tarries, wait for it. It will come. It will happen in Jesus' name. Jesus said, it, you will have it. Amen? And so wait for it. Be at peace. Be at patient. Amen? Don't get angry at the pastor, especially me. Don't get angry at anybody else. No, wait for it. Trust in God, and you shall see it. Amen? And when you come, you, you make sure you tell everybody about what the Lord has done for you so I could dance with you about all the good things that God has done for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Because you don't understand all the mountains that God had to remove just to bless you. Amen. You don't understand the things that he had to change inside of you so that you could hold it, receive it, and, be, and, and, and enjoy it. Amen? Because let me tell you this. God doesn't want to bless you so that you'll lose it. When the Lord took the, the Hebrew people into the promised land, the Bible says little by little, they received it little by little. Why? So that the land would not rise up and overtake them. You might think, oh, pastor, I'm believing God for, for a house on five acres. Praise the Lord. You better start believing God for the tractor too. <laughs> Amen. Because you ain't cutting it the way you did with that little lawnmower at home. It's a new life, new level of living, new blessing. But you have to begin to believe God for all the things. Amen. And wait so that the Lord can bless you. Amen. I, I believe there's some, some good things that are going to come into your life in Jesus' name. I see new things coming your way in the name of the Lord. I see increase from the north, south, east, and west. I see promotion. I see wisdom. I see the Lord blessing you time and time again. Even when you think that God is done blessing you, I see him blessing you. I see him blessing you over and above whatever you ask. And listen, when the blessings come, don't let it change you in the name of Jesus. You keep loving God. You keep pressing into him. You keep making the Lord and his presence your joy and your peace. You keep pressing into the things of God. Don't let the things of this world change you. No, no, thank God for those things, but don't let it change you. Keep your heart pure and right before God. Keep loving your God, whether you have or do not have. Keep loving your God. Just because God bless you doesn't give you permission to change your attitude towards him. You love him, you love him, you love him, you love him. You delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. How many of y'all receive that word today? Hallelujah.